Namaste and welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. And for this practice, you'll want to have two blocks, a strap, a bolster, and a blanket, or any other substitutions for those props. Let's begin in any way that you can sit comfortably so that you can allow your spine to lift upright while your whole body feels relaxed giving yourself a moment to mentally arrive and setting aside anything that might pull your attention from the present moment so that you can invest fully in this time of self-nourishment. So we continue to recap our exploration of the seven main chakras or energy centers according to Tantra yoga philosophy and yoga psychology. So let's do a quick review um, by assessing how you're feeling in your different energy uh, qualities. So thinking of your root chakra at the base of the spine, legs and feet, how grounded do you feel in this moment? How nourished and stable and supported do you feel right now? And then thinking of the sacral energy center at your lower belly, lower back, Svadhisthana Chakra, how fluid or flexible or adaptable do you feel in this moment? Thinking of the element of water and our ability to flow spontaneously and to even play and to lean into pleasure at times and then thinking of your solar plexus energy center, Manipura Chakra at your upper belly mid back. How able are you to have a feeling of willpower to have the discipline or the strength to either take action on something that's important to you or even to say no or even to slow down. Sometimes it takes more discipline to not over busy ourselves. Also, how is your digestion, both physically with food, but how you're digesting your current experiences? And then up to our heart energy center, Anahata Chakra, how harmonious do you feel in your relationships, your relationship with yourself, your inner being, your relationship with your loved ones who are closest to you, your relationship with those that are not so close to you, including what you might call strangers, as well as all of life around you, nature as well. And then thinking of your throat energy center, Vishuddha Chakra, how well are you giving and receiving communication today? Do you feel that you're being clear in your self-expression, honest, authentic, and honoring your unique way of being creative. And the other side of communication is also listening. How well are you listening for others' communication to you? And then thinking of your third eye center or Ajna Chakra, how clearly are you perceiving what's going on around you, not colored by narratives that might sort of keep us from seeing the truth? How much are you trusting your inner knowing, your intuition, and helping to see the bigger picture of whatever's happening in your life right now? And then think of your crown energy center or Sahasrara Chakra, how much are you feeling your connection to everyone and everything that is around you? The opposite of this would be perpetuating stories in our minds that keep us judging ourselves or judging other people that then perpetuate the narrative, the delusion that we are separate of each other or polarized 
thinking, constantly saying, you're good, you're bad, this is me, this is you. How much are you doing the opposite of that and just remembering that we are a part of something greater, that we are all interbeing and need each other. And so let's continue our self-assessment with what's happening right now by maybe closing the eyes and scanning your physical body. What's there to notice in sensations? Bringing that open-mindedness where we don't have to judge what we're observing, nor do we need to judge ourselves. Start to observe the flow of the breath. And whatever you can feel in your breathing right now, sense your energy. Bring awareness to your mind and heart. How are you feeling mentally and emotionally? We start by acknowledging what's on our plate right now and the different layers of our being so that rather than resisting what's here or working against it, we're harmonizing, we're collaborating with these different parts of ourselves, creating a sense of harmony and cohesiveness in our own being, remembering that the word yoga itself means union. And with that, I invite you to start to deepen your breath, feeling the inhalation wherever it's expanding and maybe vocalizing as you empty the breath through your mouth. Allow a few more exhales to your mouth, each inhale a little deeper. As you continue to deepen your breath, call to mind one or few things that you feel appreciation for. So that by practicing gratitude regularly, we're working to open and expand our hearts and minds. And then I invite you to say your personal intention or prayer for what you're cultivating through this practice. In recognizing our interconnectedness, I invite you to choose somebody besides yourself that you may like to dedicate your practice to today making an offering of your efforts to support someone else's well-being. And together, let's join our voices in three chants of Om. And as we're chanting, you might trace your inner gaze up the seven main energy centers from the root at the base of your spine to the crown at the top of your head. Just bringing that vibration of sound by intention to wake up energy in those areas along Sushumna Nadi, the calm that flows through the seven main chakras. Let in a deep breath. Ah. 
together. Let's begin a breathing technique that helps us to regulate balance in our energy and invite calm and focus. And that is Ujjayi Pranayama, victorious breathing. So closing your lips, gently narrow the back of your throat, creating a soft and smooth whispering sound as you breathe in, just as slowly as you breathe out through your nose. Let's try a few cycles together. I'll count five in, five out. So empty this breath to prepare. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five. Exhale, five. And you might continue to count a few more cycles on your own. And if you can, go even slower without straining the breath. You might try that. So moving through the seven main chakras are both the solar yang active, sometimes called masculine energy, as well as the lunar yin and sometimes called a feminine energy. So we have all of these moving through us at any given moment. And sometimes it can be out of balance, too much active or too much slowing down can create imbalance. So as you're lengthening the naturally energizing yang energy of inhalation to balance with the natural yin energy of exhalation, we're helping to regulate that balance. So listen to the rhythm you're creating now, and let's start to make our way into mountain pose at the very top of the mat. You may want to have two blocks in front of your feet so that you can press into them instead of the floor when we come into half forward fold. Let's prepare to move to the breath, warming up our entire body while offering gratitude to a beautiful source of energy for all of life on our planet, the sun. Sun salutations, or in Sanskrit, Surya Namaskar. Let's bring the hands together in prayer and reconnect to your intention for your practice. Moving with that intention and the presence that you can hear your breathing with. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and roll your shoulders back and down, lifting your heart towards the sun. Feel free to bend the knees as we're warming up. Exhale, bow forward from your hips. Place your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step the left knee behind you. Kneeling lunge, look up. While holding your breath, step into plank pose, top of a push-up. Exhale as you lower your knees, then your chest, then your chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slither forward and soften your shoulders back into cobra pose. Exhale, pressing up, engage your abdomen to lift your hips back to downward facing duck. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow. Root down to your feet. Inhale, rise all the way up towards the sky. And exhale, center your palms in prayer from your crown to your heart center. Surya Namaskar C, second side. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and overhead. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow towards the earth. Uttanasana. Plant your fingertips, and this time, inhale, step the right knee back. Kneeling lunge, look up, Anjaneyasana. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Exhale, lower knees, then chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slither forward and draw your shoulders back to cobra or bhujangasana. Exhale, firm in the belly to lift your hips back to downward dog, adho mukha svanasana. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee and gaze up, anjaneyasana. Exhale, step the left foot forward and fold, uttanasana. Root down, inhale, rise, 
Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your palms in prayer in Padasana. Let's move on to Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep the arms forward. Roll the shoulders back. Exhale, bow forward. This time, press your hands on your blocks or shins or the ground and inhale, lengthen your spine forward into half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Then carefully step to your plank pose, knees down or legs straight. And as you engage the abdomen, glide forward as you exhale to lower halfway down, hugging the elbows towards your ribs in Chaturanga Dandasana. Either cobra or upward facing dog, breathe in as you coil your chest up. Exhale to downward facing dog. Let's pause here for several breaths, letting your body move in any way it might be needing to loosen up. You could pedal your feet to warm up your hamstrings and calves. You could shake and nod your head to loosen up your neck as you float your shoulders back. Listen to the quality of your breath. As you continue to balance in and out, empty this breath before you walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Pressing with your hands, inhale to half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale again, fold Uttanasana. Pressing with your feet, inhale, rise. Lifting your heart towards the sun. And then exhale, hands in prayer, offering gratitude. One more time, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen forward, either step to plank, you could lower knees, chest, chin, or lightly float to Chaturanga Dandasana. Breathing into cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. On your next inhale, sweep your right leg behind you. As you exhale, bend your right knee towards your nose, rounding forward into plank pose, quietly stepping the right foot beside your right thumb into a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent lunge. Just passing through, exhale, open to your left side in warrior two, aligning right heel to arch of left foot. Inhale, flip the right palm to face up and side bend towards your rear wall, peaceful warrior. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground and either take a cat cow or flow to your vinyasa. Downward facing dog. On your next inhale, sweep your left leg behind you. As you exhale, bend the knee high towards your nose, quietly landing the foot beside your left thumb. Stay on the ball of your right foot Inhale, rise to crescent lunge. As you exhale, turn to your right in warrior two, aligning heel to arch. Flip the left palm to face up. Inhale, peaceful warrior, side bending towards your rear wall. Ride the exhalation all the way down, either into a vinyasa or cat cow, back to downward dog. Pausing for two deep breaths. Letting your gaze or drishti steady on one spot as we cultivate stillness. When you've emptied the second exhalation, then walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Root down to your feet. Inhale, rise. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bringing your palms in prayer at your heart center. Let's move into Surya Namaskar B. With your feet touching, inhale into chair pose, bending your knees together. Lean your weight back towards your heels, raising your arms. Utkatasana. As you exhale, shift your weight forward and bow from your hips, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. 
at your pace of breath, flow through your variation of vinyasa. When you arrive in downward facing dog, inhale, sweep your right leg behind you. As you exhale, step the foot quietly beside your right thumb and spin your left heel down. Inhale, rise to stand in warrior one. Ride your exhalation all the way down into your choice of vinyasa. From downward facing duck, inhale, sweep your left leg behind you. Exhale, quietly land your foot beside your left thumb and drop your right heel. Inhale, rise to Virabhadrasana one. Ride your exhalation all the way down into your vinyasa. Pausing in downward dog or resting, give it about three to five breaths where you're recalibrating to the energy of your intention and rebalancing your energy by rebalancing your breath. From here, inhale, come forward into plank pose. Exhale, slowly lower all the way down to your belly. Adding in a couple active back bends, rest your forehead on the ground and let's prepare for bound locus pose, Baddha Shalabhasana. Slide your knees as close together as you comfortably can, straightening your legs long. Press the tops of your feet firmly into the ground and keep them on the ground in this pose if you have any issues of stability in the lower back. Otherwise, you can lift the legs as well. Bring the hands behind your lower back to clasp or hold a strap between the hands. If you can clasp, see if you can hug the heels of your palms together. On your next in breath, draw your shoulder heads behind you, lifting your chest. And as you lift your head, let go of any unnecessary strain in the neck. So look slightly down. Stay for your count of five or more deep breaths. When you're done, turn one ear to rest on the ground. Let's stretch the neck, pausing for two deep breaths. Notice how your body feels. All right, our last active back bend. Either practice the same on your own, or you could let go of the arms and take a regular locust pose, or turn it up a notch and let's practice bow, Danurasana. Great one for especially stimulating your digestion. So slide the knees close together for bow. If you're taking it, bend your knees and reach back with your hands to hold your feet or ankles, inner or outer. Press your pubic bone into the ground and kick your feet back while you pull your feet towards you, lifting your knees no wider apart than hips distance. Draw your shoulder heads back and look slightly down for five to 10 deep breaths. And this time when you lower to rest, you might turn the opposite ear onto the floor to stretch the other side of your neck and maybe even windshield wiper your shin side to side to bring ease to your lower back. Allow a deep breath to fill your belly. Open your mouth, let out any sound. <sighs> Again, deep belly breath in. Longer exhale to your mouth. <sighs> Let's slide back into child's pose. 
bringing your feet together to touch as you sink your hips down to your heels, stretching your arms actively forward so that we're actively lengthening the torso up and down. And listen to the flow of your breath helping to anchor your mind in the present moment. With each exhalation, can you allow your body to relax a little deeper, the shoulders melting down your back, allowing space in the neck, your pelvis sinking more deeply back towards your heels, creating space throughout the spine. And even letting your jaw unclench as you soften your tongue and relax your eyes. And keep your heart and head close to the earth while walking your hands to the right side of your mat. Maybe even reaching outside of the mat as far as you can reach to help stretch the left side of your torso. Let's pause here for a few breaths. Inviting the inhales to expand a little more into the left side of your torso. Feel the softening effect of the exhalations. Start to walk your hands over to the left side of your mat. As far to the left as you can comfortably reach while keeping your heart and head close to the ground. Let's invite the breath to expand a little more into the right side of your torso. And as you crawl your hands forward, start to lift your hips back to downward facing dog in which we'll prepare for hip opening in single pigeon pose. So in downward dog, rotate your right thigh bone externally at the hip socket, turn out the leg. Cross your right shin in front of your pelvis onto your mat, lowering to sit with the left leg straight behind you. Square your hips, turning both frontal hip bones to equally face forward. If your right glute is spaced away from the ground, fill that space with your folded blanket or anything to provide comfort. Relax the back toes. Now, if your right shin can parallel the front edge of your mat, support the alignment of your right knee by flexing your right foot while in this posture for the next couple minutes. So lifting your chest, start to make your way down onto whatever stack of pillows or blankets or blocks you'd like to rest your torso and head on. So you're not holding yourself up. Make them as thick as you need or as thin as you need. And for those of you that want to add a twist while you're bowing forward, if it's available, you can place your right fingertips towards the upper right corner of your mat like this, bend the right elbow up and thread the left arm underneath your right bent elbow, lowering the left side of your head all the way down. And you could rest your head on a prop as well. All right, make any last little adjustments so that you can commit to being still and present with your breath for two more minutes.
And we sense the emptiness, the bottom of this next breath. And before you start to gently press yourself up and back into downward facing dog, giving yourself a few breaths there to perhaps pedal out your feet or raise your right leg and give it some movement at the hip. In light of inviting energy through the throat chakra, you might vocalize a few sighs. Now, when you're ready from downward dog, turn out your left thigh at the hip, cross your left shin in front of your pelvis and lower to sit with your right leg straight behind you, tucking the right toes so that you can Equally face both of your frontal hip bones forward and add any prop you might need under the left glute to help do that comfortably. Then relax your right toes and if your left shin is parallel to the front edge of your mat, make sure you're flexing your left foot to help stabilize your left knee. All right, let in a deep breath as you lift and stretch the front of your torso. Notice if you need to change the configuration of props so that you can comfortably bow in and relax, not having to hold yourself up and do work in this pose. Remember these restorative and yin postures are more about surrendering effort. If you'll enter thread the needle twist, crawl the left fingertips towards the upper left corner of your mat and point the left elbow up. Then thread your right arm underneath your left bent elbow and lower the right side of your head all the way down using any props you might need to rest your head on. So see if there's any adjustment your body needs so that you can comfortably let go of movement and allow stillness for two minutes while tuning in to slow and steady breaths. So begin to press yourself back into one more downward facing dog. Maybe adding some movement into your left hip when you get there. Or pedaling out your feet. From downward dog, start to lower all the way down to your belly, entering Sphinx Pose. Slide your forearms forward, lifting your chest, and land your elbows right beneath your shoulders. 
Let's continue to open up the fronts of the shoulders and the fronts of the hips and thighs. Slide your knees close together and cross your left forearm on the ground in front of your chest. Bend your right knee and backstroke your right arm. Catch hold of the big toe side of your right ankle or foot and bring the right heel gently towards slightly the outside of your right hip. To stabilize your lower back, try to keep your knees no wider apart than hips distance and ground both of your frontal hip bones. And then let your chest face forward as you relax your neck and shoulders for a few more deep breaths. Notice the sensations you're experiencing here. Gently release back to Sphinx Pose, sliding your knees close together. Let's cross the right forearm in front of your chest and bend your left knee. Backstroke your left arm and catch hold of the big toe side of your left ankle or foot. Bringing your left heel slightly to the outside of your left hip. Have your knees no wider apart than hip distance while grounding your two frontal hip bones. And let your chest face forward while you relax your shoulders, your neck, your jaw for a few more deep breaths. Let's press up to tabletop, hands and knees, and slide your legs out in front of you, preparing for a seated spinal twist. Start by extending your left leg forward and bending your right knee. Choose to either step your right foot on the ground in front of your right hip or crossed outside of your left knee, and then you might even bend the left knee. So choose the setup that allows you to equally ground your two sitting bones while sitting up tall shoulders relaxed place your right hand on the floor behind your pelvis and press into the ground with all of your lower body as you breathe in to lift and stretch your spine keep the shoulders relaxed pelvis still and exhale twist to your right lower your left arm to hold your right leg or maybe to hook the elbow outside of it and with each inhale rebound your weight off the ground to Invite the spine to lengthen some more. And with your exhale, soften the belly and allow the twist to deepen. One more deep breath. And as you exhale, unwind and let's switch onto the second side. Right leg straight, left knee bent. If you can set up similarly as the first side, try that. Left foot in front of the hip or crossed outside of the right knee, maybe also bending the right knee. Place your left hand behind your pelvis. Rooting down, breathe in as you rise up. Keep the pelvis still as you exhale to twist to the left. Lower your right arm to hold your left leg or hook your elbow outside of it. Breathing in, root down to rise up. Breathing out, soften your belly and allow the twist to deepen. On your exhalation, unwind, and let's straighten both legs in front, preparing for a seated twist. 
or seated forward fold. Paschimottanasana. So separate your feet hips distance apart. If you know that you tend to round the shoulders, you might use a strap as an extension of your arms so that you're able to have a little more space to relax the shoulders and bow from your hips rather than bowing from your neck, which closes off the breath. Flex your feet and press the insteps of your feet forward while rooting down again through both sitting bones. Breathe in and lift your spine. Relax the shoulders down. As you breathe out, little by little, hinge forward from your hips, keeping your throat open, your shoulders relaxed, your chest slightly lifted, and your belly slightly firming in. Some of you might clasp your big toes with your peace fingers. If you can do so while still lengthening your spine and relaxing your shoulders. A few more deep breaths here. Press down through your pelvis and breathe in, lead with your chest to slowly rise. You might roll out your feet, point and flex your toes, just giving the bottom of your root chakra a little more release as needed. In fact, I invite you to move any part of your body that just needs a little last release of tension or invitation of fluidity. Did any particular energy center call your attention today in any way? Whether you might be feeling a lot of energy flowing there or kind of depleted there or pretty balanced. What have you noticed through your practice? I'm gonna invite you into one more pranayama before we lower into either a restorative pose or lying down for shavasana. So find a comfortable way to sit in which you can really feel open to breathe well. And this breathing technique is alternate nostril breathing or nodi shodana pranayama, which helps to, which invites, so that we've got the left and right hemispheres of the brain, right? Each uh, attributing to whether the yin energy or the yang energy that I talked about earlier, the feminine or the masculine or the solar, the lunar or the solar, right? And so through alternate nostril breathing, we're inviting this harmonious flow of both energies throughout our, all our seven chakras. And for many, they experience a calming effect that allows us to rest our attention deeper inward, which is helpful for relaxing in shavasana and quieting the mind a bit more for meditation. So as you practice this, let your posture be that of openness, groundedness, and alertness while being relaxed. As you rest the left hand on your lap, you might place it in a mudra that invites tuning inward and concentrating, and that's gyan mudra. Thumb and index, fingers touching, palm resting, face up. The right hand, let's place in Vishnu Mudra, sticking out the thumb, pinky, and ring fingers. As you continue to breathe through your nose, let go of creating a sound. Let it be very smooth, sustained, and quiet. We're going to use the right thumb to close the right nostril like this, and the right ring and pinky fingers to close the left nostril like this alternate nostril breathing, or in Sanskrit, nodi shodhana pranayama. Now, as we practice, you might close your eyes to help you tune inward. If there's a particular chakra that you chose to focus on today, you might land your inner gaze there. And if you can remember the color of the chakra, you can visualize the color. Otherwise, you can let your attention rest at your third eye center. All right, let's prepare to practice three cycles together and three cycles on your own by letting in a deep breath through the nose. Sigh it out if you like, open the mouth. 
close the mouth, right thumb, close the right nostril, inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, hold the breath, two, one, close left, exhale right for six, five, four, three, two, one, hold for two, one, stay here, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, second cycle, inhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, third cycle, inhale left for six, hold for two, close left, exhale right for six, hold two, inhale right, six, hold two, close right, exhale left, six, hold two, continue three more cycles on your own, When you have finished, breathe naturally and observe the effects of the practice. And take your time beginning to lower your body either into a restorative posture such as using two blocks for supported fish pose, one behind the head, one right underneath the bottom tips of the shoulder blades to open the heart space, or lying down flat or any other configuration of props that allows you to more easily welcome stillness and rest. Closing your eyes, breathing naturally, let yourself drop deeper inward with less effort, Shavasana.
Notice how your physical body is responding to your physical yoga practice. Taking your time, listen to how your body wants to begin waking up. Start with small, subtle movements and ease into gentle stretches. To continue tuning inward, and as we prepare for our guided meditation, you might keep the eyes closed as you begin to turn over onto your right side and rest your head. <coughs> Notice the flow of your breath and sense your overall energetic state. Taking your time, begin to lift your body up. Find a comfortable way to sit in which you can feel tall in the spine, bringing awareness to creating space that allows the seven main chakras to be right above each other consecutively, where the shoulders can soften down, exposing an open, buoyant heart space. And as breath can flow naturally, fluidly, inviting a balanced flow of energy. You might choose to close your eyes for meditation. You might choose to steady a gentle gaze downcast. Whatever allows you to tune inward more easily. And a mudra that I invite you to practice is one that helps to balance the five earth elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether each represented by each finger of each hand. So you bring the fingertips of each hand to touch like this, like you're holding a sphere between the palms. And then just let the shoulders roll down. And let's begin by allowing a deep inhalation. Softly exhale through the mouth. This time imagine breathing up the spine from the root chakra to the crown. Exhaling from the crown down to the root, passing through the seven main energy centers. One more time. Inhale from the base of the spine to the top of the head. Exhale from the crown to the root. And then let the breath flow naturally again. Sensing its subtle movement in and out. Let, bring your mudra to hover just in front of your root energy center towards the base of your spine. You could rest the arms on your lap. And at the base of your spine, your legs and feet, you might imagine the color red. A glowing light pulsing to the natural inflow and outflow of breath. Setting your inner gaze on that red glowing light, welcome the feelings of stability, groundedness, nurturance, and loving connection with your body, Mother Earth, and your community.
Feel a sense of trusting that life is supporting you in all your basic human needs. You might mentally or out loud chant the Bija Mantra Lam. Lam. Then hover the sphere of your palms just a few inches above the base of your spine in front of your lower belly. In that region of your energy body, visualize a vibrant orange color. Sensing the water element that flows within you and enables you the ability to adapt, change direction as needed in order to flow with the inevitable changes of life. Feel the vibrancy of your senses and your ability to experience pleasure and joy and play and fun through your senses, as well as honor your sexuality and sensuality. See that orange glowing light at your sacral center pulsing with your natural breath. You might hear mentally or chant out loud, Vam. Vam. Let the sphere of your palms hover in front of your solar plexus, upper belly. As you visualize in that region of your being a glowing yellow, and fiery light, sensing your strength of will, your confidence of being, your courage to see beyond the limitations of the ego thoughts. and your fire to digest and transmute see that yellow glowing fiercely You might hear or chant Ram, Ram. Lift your sphere in front of your sternum, heart energy, visualizing throughout the area a glowing, vibrant green, like an emerald forest. Feeling how air flows with nourishment into and out of you. Sensing the harmonious reciprocity that exists between you and all of life around you through the energy of love, the purest form 
of who you are. You might hear or chant yum. Yum. Lift your sphere to the front of your throat. Visualizing pulsing blue like the ocean, blue like the sky. A sense of purity, clarity, flow, ease, creativity, expression, listening deeply. You might hear or chant hum, hum. Lift your sphere just in front of your forehead, imagining inward at your third eye, center vibrating a glowing indigo light. Tapping into clarity of seeing, seeing through illusions of separation, seeing the bigger picture embracing your intuition. You might hear or chant Aum. Aum. Lift your sphere above the crown of your head and at your crown and vision pulsing white and violet lights. like a fountain pouring throughout your being, surrounding you, remembering that you are connected to all of life around you. Sensing the spiritual existence that you have. Tap into that inner silence. And then resting your hands in your lap. Notice anything you feel mentally, emotionally, physically, energetically. Let in a deep breath from the base of the spine to the crown. Open the mouth, exhale down. Allow a moment to offer gratitude for anyone and anything that supports your well being. Remind yourself of your intention. And remember to whom you offered your practice to support their well being. And together, let's close with one ohm. Deep breath in. light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.